purpose of the Godhead. Somebody say hallelujah. He came to die for us.
but we are gathered on a call. Yes. We are expected to what God is doing in these end times. We are not going to be common Christians. Yes. We are not going to serve a God who you do not know, but He will reveal Himself unto us. Ten years ago, around about ten years ago, when I gave my life to Christ, I said, Lord, if I am to serve you, I do not want to know you by somebody else's revelation. I do not want to know you by television. But I want to have an encounter with you. I want you to reveal yourself in my life. Because when you go through difficulties and troubles, you're not going to rely on another person's revelation, but it's because of the God who reveals himself in your life. And that same God will sustain you. That's why the word of God said, I know my Redeemer lives. And the Apostle Paul would say, nothing can separate us from the love of God. I said, God, I want to serve you. And I remember one time I stepped in my living room and I began to say, I cried out unto God and the Lord visited me right there. I felt such a strong heat. It's as if somebody had lit a fire around me. I opened my eyes to look and no, nobody was there. I knew God had touched me there and there. And I've never been the same again since that encounter. He 
Isaiah 2, 1 with us. The word of God says that the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, but our iniquities, our sins have separated us from the love of God. He says that in Psalm 24, who shall ascend unto the hill of the Lord? Only those with clean hands, only those with a pure heart. Many times the devil comes us because we are not in right standing with God. In order for God to pour out his spirit and bring about the end time revival, we need to treat this body as a temple. The temple Bible said they went a 
worthless bread. They fall into the trap of the devil. Verse number six. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. They beat the people. Many of the people of Israel died. Many of the people of Israel died. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. The enemy comes only to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Whenever the devil is around, his only purpose is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Oh, my pastor, I used to know God. I used to go to church. I used to serve God with a passion. Some of us, the devil has stolen our fire that we used to carry. He's, he's made the fire to go down. Because that's exactly what it was. The Bible said it is your iniquities which have separated you from your God. Many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. You see, the Bible said many of them died, and in those that were remaining, they will gradually die. Because when the serpent bites you, he, he, he puts poison in your body, and maybe some of them had one month to live. We don't know. Some of them had two months to live. But what we know, they were dying. And the Bible said they cried out, they prayed, they said, Lord, we will sin. They repented, they came to Moses, forgive us. What must we do? The Bible said, call upon the Lord, for he will hear you. God is very near us. God answers our prayers. And as they cried out, the Bible said, God said to Moses, Moses, take a broad serpent and put it on a pole and lift it up. And whoever is bitten by the serpent, when they look at the broad serpent, They will live. No matter how terrible the snake bite was, no matter how bad the situation was, when they looked at the broad serpent, there was life. John 3, chapter 14, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. That whoever believes in him, they should not perish, but they should live. The very act that Moses did in the wilderness, it was a prophecy for what was to come. That is why Jesus would say, whoever believes in me, they will live. John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Jesus has been lifted up. But what are we doing today? Are we abusing what Jesus has done on the cross? Because he can never come to die again for us. I want to let you know the blood of Jesus is sufficient for you. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. But you must receive him by faith. You must receive the very act that he did on the cross. As day goes on, new doctrines are being introduced. People are getting impatient. People just want the quick things. But the, the gospel has not changed. It's the cross that will deliver us. It's the cross that will open doors. It's the cross that will bring care. It's the cross. Jesus has been lifted up. Look up to the cross. Receive the blood. Repent of your sins. Say, Lord, let's go. No matter how bad it was, when 
they looked at the circle they shut in. At one point, the Bible said the children of Israel, they were traveling and for three days, they were looking for water, they didn't find water. On the third day, they found water, but they couldn't drink of that water because it was bitter. They couldn't drink of the water because it was bitter. That bitter water represents the challenges, the disappointments that we face in this life, the hurts, the pain, whatever people do to you, they abuse you. That is the bitter water. But God has a solution for every problem. No matter the bitter waters you may encounter. Listen to this. God said to Moses, He said, Moses, take the wood. There was a piece of wood lying there. God said to Moses, take the wood and throw it into the bitter waters and the waters shall be made sweet. God commanded Moses to take the wood. Jesus died on the wood. It was a prophecy that the cross is sufficient. That no matter what you may encounter, as you apply the wood in your situation, there will be change.